so I am about to head down to Somerset, which is a nice change for me going south because I'm normally always going north for my adventures. I'm normally up in the Lake District or the Peak District or Snowdonia. And I'm heading down there to find and stay in a secret teepee, which is hidden away in a field somewhere. It looks really remote, really just cute. If you've watched any of my recent videos, you'll know that I've recently got into wild camping. So I did my first solo wild camp on Egan in Snowdonia and my second one on Fleet with Pike in the Lake District. Both amazing experiences, both very different experiences, but I wanted to do something a little bit different and have a bit of a different aspect to it. So I found this secret teepee on Wild Point who are sponsoring today's video. And Wild Point is a website where you can search for wild camping spots but they're all on privately owned land all over the UK. So you get the aspect of being wild and out in a really remote place um, without those of other campers around you, but you're on privately owned land, you have permission to be there. Because that's the only thing with wild camping is it's technically illegal. <laughs> so the great thing about Wild Point is that you can find these remote places, um, but you don't have to worry about being asked to move on halfway through your nice sleep so i'm gonna head down to the secret tp i actually bypassed cheddar gorge on my way so i'm gonna stop off at cheddar gorge have a little bit of a wonder and then i'm gonna go find my tp Let's just do that. It's huge in here. Let's go see what's about. There's this really cool little building. No, we don't get in there. Okay, that's just for decoration. It's cool, it's cool. Got a hay bale over here. This is the kitchen in a horse box. Cute! Oh, they left me some local homemade cider. That is so sweet. Got a little campfire here, which I will be lighting later. I guess that's my wood and kindling. Little seating area. <laughs> I don't know why I'm showing you a toilet, but it's just really cute, look. And you got your views of everything. Honestly, I'm gonna have to be careful going up and down here in the dark. I'm so happy. It's, oh, it's adorable. Well, I don't know what to do first. Normally I have to pitch a tent or something and I don't. So, I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna attempt to build a fire. That's the first thing on the agenda. It's fire building and um, I'm not very good at it. Right, 
I'm just gonna let it sit for 10 minutes and then I can eat it. It's so peaceful here. <laughs> Can't work out whether it's weird or cool that I'm just sat in a field by myself eating next to a fire. Um, it's getting dark soon, so I've probably got like half an hour of daylight left. And then we'll see if I turn into a scaredy cat. <laughs> If you've never roasted a marshmallow and then squished it between two chocolate biscuits, you honestly haven't lived. Okay, so, melted marshmallow. Squish it in between. Put it off. And you have, ah! A small, look at that. I'm so happy right now. I survived my first night in the teepee. Yay! <laughs> Total transparency, as always. I was definitely a bit of a scaredy pants last night. Um, of the three solo wild camps I've done, this was definitely the scariest for me. Something about being up on a mountain just makes you feel so much less accessible. So I think being on ground level, so closer to civilization, definitely made me more apprehensive. I had a lovely evening. I roasted marshmallows, had some dinner, sat by the fire. And then it got dark and I was like <laughs> But that's a normal a normal feeling to have um, and it's totally rational and I think it's good to, to feel fear because it means you're aware of the potential risks. But the one thing is I'll never let fear stop me from doing anything and I think a lot of people that I speak to, fear is what's stopping them from doing their first solo wild camp. And I thought I would share a few things that I kind of do to talk my mind down when I'm getting into that scaredy pants state and I first of all just tune into the rational logical part of my brain very small part where what I do is weigh up the risk versus the likelihood so the likelihood of anything happening to me the likelihood of me coming to any harm is so 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 low um, I just remind myself of that and the chances of, of anything happening are very 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 minimal so I talk myself down by reminding myself of that. And then I also use the fear bubble technique, which is something I read in uh, an Aunt Middleton book, if you're not familiar. But I refuse to be scared until I'm in the situation where I need to be scared. So I remind myself that I'm not at any harm in that moment. I'm in bed or I'm in my tent or wherever you may be. You're not in harm in that moment. So don't be scared then, because there's no reason to be. If anything were to happen, that's the time to be scared. <laughs> and that's when your fight or flight responses would kick in. We're lucky that we live in a country where we're not threatened by bears or snakes or poisonous animals. So that, imagine, imagine camping in the middle of America somewhere or Australia. I don't, I don't know if I could do it. I don't think anyone should let fear stop them from doing things. I think just prepare yourself with uh, things to keep you occupied, keep you busy. I had an audiobook on last night when I went to sleep and I took my iPad with me and had some movies on. So things like that, just home comforts or something to make you feel a little bit less scaredy pants. And then hopefully the whole situation can be so much more enjoyable. And already waking up, having this beautiful view, knowing that I've pushed through and like conquered a fear, it's like an awesome feeling this morning. So it's definitely worth doing. And these are my views. So I'm gonna make a hot chocolate. I'm one of these weirdos that doesn't drink tea or coffee, by the way, so it's always gonna be hot chocolate that you see in my videos. But I'm gonna make a hot chocolate and then head home. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. Such a cool experience. I've never stayed in a TV before. Um, and just all the little cute little things nearby, it was just, it was really nice. So this is on Wild Point. And yeah, go and check out all of the other spots on Wild Point. They're all over the UK. If you're not yet ready to 
conquer your first solo camp, then maybe go with a friend or go with somebody, but you can still enjoy the experience and then it might build up your courage to then do a solo one in the future if that's what you want to do. So yeah, that's me and the teepee. Bye. As always, please subscribe, share, like, comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've got any questions and I'll see you soon.